from a series that I call The Little Red Dress, and it's sort of a, you know, a, a little bit of a joke on the ubiquitous black dress, and in this case it's a little red dress. Uh, and in each of these, uh, uh, there's little carved wooden uh, female figures, and people always say, oh, where did you get those figures? And, and in fact, I made all the figures. I'm a, I'm a whittler. Um, and she's meant to just kind of represent my alter ego um, or in some sense, um, you know, what kind of what every middle-aged woman I mean, finds themselves contemplating in their life. So she's always in this either a sort of precarious position where she's, you know, stoically facing her fate um, or she's, you know, summing up kind of what her life is about um, and she's got this kind of a determination to kind of survive no matter what, to um, think, well, okay, I can deal with this. So there is, I'm interested in a sense of both pathos and humor at the same time with these. All the other works are from a big series that I've been doing using um, uh, found objects and transforming them, um, giving them kind of a new function. and. I sort of started by calling them widgets, but they've they've really transformed into other um, other just playful objects. Really, th these works are kind of a celebration of invention and and um, that kind of old-fashioned. You make it one thing at a time, and really the the original uh, premise of this arrived from a very funny story um, way back when I was at. Girl Scout camp, one of my uh, tent mates, you know, we were going around the tent saying, you know, what, did you, what does your father do for a living? And this particular girl said that her father was a spatula handle maker. And that seemed like a completely normal answer at the time. And, but for some reason, I've remembered that all these years and thought about how kind of odd an answer that was. And especially now in this, um, you know, this era where everything is just kind of squeezed out of plastic. Uh, and then all the wooden parts are parts that I, um, that I carve one at a time, and people are always surprised by that. So every single one of these balls is hand-carved one at a time, and every single one of these segments is hand-carved one at a time. These are things that are just pegged together and have, you know, this ability to do... Um, some movement. Uh, so what I'm interested in is a, just a real playful sense that that every single object has, you know, a, a, its own little personality. That they're uh, collecting all these wire implements just without an idea that I was that I would be working with these. Uh, I had a whole collection on my wall in my studio of these wonderful um, wire objects that. You know, one can really sense the original maker that they were done again in little cottage industries. So, <coughs> once I started seeing how really cool this collection of of objects was, then I, I realized I could you know take it one step farther and give it a completely new life. Not not just that collected object that you keep pristine as it was, but give it give it a com completely new um, metamorphosis. So, you know, I just stumble on these here and there, yard sales and flea markets and antique stores, and of course people know that I use this stuff, so sometimes I, I get things left at my door to use. Um, in terms of the wood part and how I make these, uh, they everything is hand-carved, and actually I think maybe a better term is whittling, and I think of whittling as a little different than what people envision as carving. Usually if you say you're a wood carver, people think of... Um, using a hammer and a chisel. And these are really done uh, with just a small knife, um, like an X-Acto knife. I just sit in my, hold the object in my lap and just um, chip away at the form piece by piece. But the trick is that I start on a bandsaw and I do all the rough, initial rough cuts on a bandsaw. So, and then